Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 66, beginning with number 27. At the end of the video, after having watched the entire video, if you find it useful and if you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as a tutor, you can reach me at Keshwani Prep, that's P R E P Prep, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Let's take a look at number 27. Number 27 says that we have a set X which happens to be a set of eight consecutive numbers. Eight consecutive integers to be more precise. And then we have another set, set Y, which is which is made by adding by adding add four and and subtract four from each of the numbers that you find in set X. Question simply is how many more in set Y? The easiest, the simplest, the quickest way is to simply do it out. Don't try to don't try to do it in an abstract manner. Just do it out. Just make up a Just make up the sets. Here's a set X, which is made up of eight consecutive numbers. So just make up eight numbers. So how about? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And now we do our set Y. Set Y, we're going to first add 4 to each of these numbers. So if you add 4 to 1, 1 will become 5, 2 will become, if you add 4, 6, 7, 8. You see 4 plus 4 is 8. And we continue here. We have 9, and then 10, 11, and 12. By the time you get to the last one, 8 plus 4 is 12. And now let's subtract, let's subtract 4 from each of these. If you subtract, start subtracting 4, if you start from here, if you subtract 4, 8 minus 4 is 4, and then 3, 2, 1, 5, 5 minus 4 is 1, and then 4 minus 4 is going to be 0, 3 minus 4 is going to be negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. You have to pay attention as to where to stop. The last one is this one. 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 3. We just have to figure out how many there are in set Y, which is, which is this guy here. Set Y, which is made up of these numbers here, and how many there are in set X. Set X, of course, we already know there are 8 of them. Let's just count how many there are. So here we have here we have 4, and here we have 4, obviously, which was the original set here. And then we have 4, we have four more here, and 4 more here. The question is, how many more there are in set Y? The answer is 8. Set X has set X has eight members, and set Y happens to have sixteen members. Therefore, it has eight more elements or members than does set X. Next one. These are straightforward problems. The only way you can get it wrong is if we try to do it in a hurry. Just pay attention; you're fine. They're very straightforward. The next one is even simpler. We're looking for closest. Closest value to 60.2 over 1.03 times 4.86. And by closest, by closest, they're simply asking us to they're simply asking us to approximate this value. So let's do that. 60.02 is approximately same as 60. 1.03 is same as 1, approximately. And 5.486, we're going to 5.86, we're going to say it's 5. 60 divided by 5 is 12. And there's your answer. So the value of this guy is approximately 12. That's all it is. Number 29. Number 29 is a little tricky. We're going to have to pay attention. So here we are told that we have 140 books total. 140 books total. And we are told that we have three kinds of books, three different kinds of books, okay? Again, as I always tell you, you must have the book in front of you, which is why I always emphasize at the beginning of the video that you must own the book. If you do not own one, 
purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You have to have it in front of you so that you can read the problems yourselves. Because I do not put down the entire problem on the blackboard because otherwise we'll be here forever. So read the problems to yourself and you will understand what I'm doing on the blackboard here. If you read the problem, you will find that we have three different kinds of books. We have, we have books that are paperback fiction, paperback fiction. We have paperback non-fiction. And finally, we are told that we have hardcover non-fiction. These are the three kind of books we have. So one more time. P stands for paperback, subscript F is a fiction, paperback fiction, paperback non-fiction, and hardcover non-fiction. Do you understand? We have no hardcover fiction book. These are the only three kind of books we have. And here we go. We are told that uh, we own, this guy owns 20 more, 20 more paperback non-fiction than hardcover nonfiction. We are also told that he owns twice as many paperback fiction as paperback nonfiction. And the question is, here's the question. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it a little bit more interesting. I'll change my mind. We're going to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to put a demarcation here. And let's, even though this is a multiple choice question, let's convert this into a data sufficiency problem. Data sufficiency problem. First, we're going to solve it as a data sufficiency problem, and then we'll solve it as a multiple choice problem. Because what I, the point I'm trying to make here is to make you understand. Most people feel that the data sufficiency problems are more difficult, they are more time consuming. It is ex actually exactly the opposite. Data sufficiency problems go very fast if you understand the concept data sufficiency. We simply have to establish whether or not we have enough data. We don't actually have to do any work. So let's, let's do this first as a data sufficiency problem, and then, then we'll do the same problem as a multiple choice problem, because that's what it is right now. So here's what it is. The question is, how many, how many, how many hardcover nonfiction book we have? We have three kinds of book. This is what we're looking for. That's our final goal. This is statement one. Statement one. Okay, so let's begin this story. So the question is, we are told that we have 140 books, three different kinds, paperback fiction, paperback nonfiction, and hardcover nonfiction, 140 of them all together. Statement one tells us that we own 20 more paperback nonfiction than hardcover nonfiction. Let's see what we can do. How many unknowns do we have here? We have three unknowns. We have unknown quantity of paperback fiction, we have unknown quantity of paperback nonfiction, and we have unknown quantity of hardcover nonfiction. Three unknowns, and therefore, we must have three independent equations, otherwise we cannot solve for these values. It's impossible. Do we have three equations at this point when we're looking at statement one? How many equations do we have at this point while we are at statement one? This is statement two. We haven't, we haven't looked at statement two yet. Let's, let's raise this so, so we're not looking at it. We just have statement one. How many equations do we have at this, as of this point? The answer is two. The answer is two because one equation is already given to us, which is right here. This is, the, this is our equation. This is our equation. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn it into an equation so we can see that. We are told that there are 140 books, which means paperback fiction book, paperback non-fiction book, and hardcover non-fiction book must equal 140, because there are 140 books altogether. Again, remember, this is the guy we're looking for. This, this is the unknown we're looking for. So this is one equation. Here's the other equation, second equation. We own 20 more paperback nonfiction than hardcover nonfiction. How many hardcover nonfiction we ha we have? If we were to add 20 more to it, that's how many paperback nonfiction we have. This is the second equation. This is the second equation. The question is, can we solve for the three unknowns based on two equations? The answer is no. The first statement by itself is not sufficient. A D B C E. The first statement by itself is not sufficient, but it's not a worthless information. It is not an utterly useless information. It will actually very. It is actually very useful information. If we have something else in the second statement, perhaps we can put. Second statement will give us the third equation that we are looking for. But it is actually a very useful information, but not enough. It's, it's useful but not sufficient. 
So for answer cannot be A or D. Let's look at second equation. Second statement rather. Second statement tells us that we have Oh, I erased it. Uh, we own twice as many. It says we own twice as many paperback fiction as paperback non-fiction. Always have to pay attention so that I don't mess it up. It's very simple to make a. It's very easy to make a mistake. And that's our third equation right here. We already have one equation. We have second equation. So now when we are working on the second statement, when we are working on the second statement, we cannot look at the first statement. We have to look at the second statement by itself. And by doing so, we have one equation here, another equation here. We have two equations, three unknowns. We cannot do it. Second statement by itself is also not sufficient. But if you put first and second statement together, second statement gives us the third equation that we are looking for, which is twice as many non-fiction, uh, twice as many fiction book, paperback fiction book as non-fiction. So whatever number of paperback non-fiction that we have, we have two times as many paperback fiction. There you go, we are done. Now as far as, as far as the exam is concerned, as far as the exam is concerned, had, it, had this been a uh, data sufficiency problem, had this been data sufficiency problems, in the real exam we are done. Putting the three, putting the two statements together gives us the three three independent equations that we're looking for, and therefore the answer is C. That's it, we're done. But unfortunately, it is not a data sufficiency problem, and therefore we'll have to do more work. Multiple choice problem always require more work than the data sufficiency problems do. It's exactly the opposite. Data sufficiency problems are actually uh, they go very fast because you don't have to do any work. We, nobody's asking us how old is Michael. We simply have to tell them do we have enough information to figure out Michael's age if we wanted to. And if the answer is yes, then that's it. We don't have to actually do it out. Do you understand? But this is a multiple choice problem, so we have no choice but to do it out because we're looking for this guy. So let's begin the story. We can erase all of these things so we have room. We're just going to keep our three, three equations, that's all, on the blackboard. Nothing else. These are the three equations we have. And that's it. So let's get going, shall we? What can we do here? What did I do in my work? Well, we can express this equation, as a matter of fact, in, in, in terms of one variable. Why don't we do that? Right here is the first one. Paperback, paperback fiction is two times paperback non-fiction. We can put it right here. So this can go right in here. Paperback fiction is two times paperback non-fiction. This is paperback non-fiction. And we can express paperback non-fiction, paperback non-fiction right from here. Hardcover nonfiction, hardcover nonfiction is paperback nonfiction minus 20. Right here. And that can go right in front of this guy. Let's do this, shall we? So paperback nonfiction minus 20. There you go. I hope it's not getting too crowded. Right here is what we're dealing with here. So one more time, we took the equation that we got from the second statement, which is paper number of paperback fiction book we have is two times the number of paperback non-fiction. We put it in here. Number of hard covers that we have is 20 less than number of paperback non-fiction we have. We got it from here. That's all. We're done. We just solve for one variable. Once we have one variable, the rest is downhill. So let's do that. I'm going to have to erase this obviously because we need to run. There we go. One, oh sorry, not one. This is where you have to pay attention. I almost messed it up. Two, three, four. Two times paperback nonfiction. Two, three, four. Four times paperback nonfiction is equal to 140. And when you bring this negative 20 to the other side, this equals to 140. When you bring a negative 20 to the other side, it becomes positive one positive 20. I'm just going to write that as 160. There you go. 160 divided by 4. Half of 160 is 80, so it's 40. There you go. Paperback nonfiction is 40. If paperback nonfiction is 40, then paperback fiction, paperback fiction we know is two times, two times paperback nonfiction. Therefore, it is 80. And once we know that thing, we can figure out the hardcover. Hardcover would have to be, hardcover nonfiction would have to be 140 minus the 40, which is 100 minus the 80. 
one. Turns out that we have 20 hardcover non-fiction. We have 20 hardcover non-fiction. What number was this thing? This was number 29, I believe it was. And I'm going to quickly verify it in the back to make sure that I did not make a mistake, but that's what I come up with. Number 29, the answer is B as in boy. B as in boy is number 20. Uh, B as in boy is 20. It is correct. Let's go to number 30. But I hope that now you see the difference between the multiple choice problem and the data sufficiency problem because in the multiple choice problems we have no choice but to actually solve the bloody thing because they are asking us how many hardcover books we have. The only way we can figure out how many hardcover books we have is to actually solve the bloody thing. Whereas in the data sufficiency, they're not asking us how many of these whole, how many of these kind of books we have. They're simply asking us, do we have enough information to figure it out? The answer is yes. The answer was C. The answer was C in that case because when you put the two students together, we have three equations that we're looking for. One equation was given in the problem, one equation was given in statement one, other equation was given in statement two. There we go, three equations, three unknown. Number 30. The question here is, what is the average of 3, 15, 32, and n plus 1? Let's find out, shall we? The question is, how much is n? Oh, sorry, it says the average of 3, 15, 32, and n plus 1 is 18. The question is, how much is n? What's the value of n? Let's find out, shall we? So we have 3 plus 15 plus 32 plus n plus 1. And since, since, their, average is 30, since their average is 18, their sum must be 18 times 4. So far so good. All right, let's pay attention. We'll see what happens next. Pay attention here. 3 plus 15 is 18, isn't it? 3 plus 15 is 18. So if you will subtract 18 from both sides, we should be fine. So let's subtract 18 from both sides. 3 plus 15 is 18. We're going to subtract it. And this becomes 18 times 3. Are you with me? Let's continue then. So here we have n plus 32 plus 1, which is 33, equals... 18. Something has gone drastically wrong, has it? Or maybe not. Oh, it's not 18, it's 18 times 3. Oh, I forgot that. Which is why I thought something had gone drastically wrong because I was about to get a negative number. Not that we can't have a negative number, but I found it odd. So it's 18 times 3. Pay attention. Or rather, I'm talking to myself, pay attention. So n equals 18 times 3 minus 33. This is this has got three, this has got three. Let's take a three common out. If we take a three common out, we can get 18. 18 is just 18, and 33 is going to become 11 if you take out three common. 18 minus 11 is 7. 7 times 3 is 21. Voila. n equals 21. Number 31. Number 31. We are told that A, B, and C live on a straight road. School, we are told, is halfway, halfway between between A and B. And B we are told is halfway between school and C. We are further told that school is four miles from C. The question is what is the distance from A to C? How far is a to C. Let's see what we can do. Since they are on a straight line, that's a, that's a straight road, that's what we're going to do. We're going to draw a straight road and begin our work. The school we are told is halfway between A and B. So let's draw A and B. Here's A, 
there is B and this cool happens to be exactly halfway which means this distance whatever it is is equal to this distance. We have to remember that because this cool is exactly halfway between A and B. We are further told that B is halfway between school and C. This is school and this is your C. And school happens, to, we are told that B, B is halfway between school and C, which means this distance right here must be the same distance as this distance. But this distance from school to B is the same distance as this one. And this distance is the same as this one, which means all three of these distances are equal. All of them are equal. All of these distances are equal. And finally, we are told the school is four miles from C. School, right here, is four miles from C. This distance right here is school, we are told, is four miles from C. If the school is four miles from C, then this distance must be two, and this distance must be two, and therefore this distance is two. That's it, we're done. A to C is what they're looking for. Oh, there you go. A to C is six miles. A to C is six miles. It's just two plus two plus two. That's all. 32. 32. In 32, you're being asked how much is x? How much is x? And we are given a pro uh, picture. I want to draw the picture properly, so we, we need to room. So I'll do my best as to how the picture is given to us. So we're given something like this. One line that goes like that. Another line that goes like that. Another line like that. And another line like that. And this is the X. This is the X that is given to us. And let's put down all the other information that is given to us. 150. Where is 150? So this does not extend this thing, this does not extend out, or rather, one fifty. Just give me a second. Oh, I drew it wrong. This is not the line that extends, this is the line that extends right there. This is 150. We are told that this is 150. We are told that again this thing is this distance right here is 150 I believe and we are told that this distance is 150. That's all we are given. The question is how much is x? Let's begin this story, shall we? Let's begin this story. I'm going to go step by step. So stay with me the story and we're going to mark it. We're going to mark our steps so that we can follow it. So here's the step number one. This is step number one right here. If this is 150, if this angle is 150, then this must be 30. This must be 30 degrees. Why? Because it's a straight line. This is a straight line right here. This is a straight line right here, which means 30 plus 150 must be 180. Let me erase this, this part here. So this is 30 degrees and we're calling this step number one. So far so good? Okay. And we also know that this guy is 150 and this is a straight line. This is a straight line which means if this is 150 then this guy must be 30 degrees. This guy must be 30 degrees. Similarly, if this guy is 150, this is a straight line. Since this is a straight line, if this is 150, the remaining must be 30 degrees. Let's call this step number 2. If this is 30 and this is 30, then this must be 120. Let's call this step number 3. This is 120. If this is 120, if this is 120 and since this is a straight line, this must be 60. Let's call it step number 4. If this is 60, if this is 60, and we just found out that this is 30 because this is 150. If this is 150, this is 30. This, is, this must be 30. That's it, we're done. X must be 
60 plus 30 is 90, it looks like x is 90, even though it looks nothing like 90. How much is x? x is 90 degrees. That's it. Okay, just, just follow step by step. So step one was, if this is 150, this has to be 30. That's step number one. Similarly, if this is 150, this has to be 30. Step number two. And then step number three, if this is 30 and this is 30, this has to be 20, 120. That's step number three. If this is 120, this would have to be 60. Step number four. If this is 150, this has to be 30. Step number five. Once we have this angle and this angle, x must be 90. Number 33. Number 33. Number 33 tells us that we're going at the speed of one mile per minute. One mile per minute is the same as going the same as saying you're going 60 miles an hour. And we are burning, we are told that we burned at the rate of at the rate of five gallons per two hour. Before we write anything else down, let's just understand that five gallons per two hour is the same as saying that we are burning two and a half gallon every hour. Keep that in mind. We are further told that we used three and three quarter gallon. Three and three quarter gallon. The question simply is, how many miles did we travel? How many miles did we travel? How many miles did we travel given the fact that we have we are told, given given the fact that we, we have burned three and three quarter gallon, and given the fact that we are going at the speed of one mile per minute, how many miles must we have traveled in this scenario? Okay? And we are told that we are burning at the rate of five gallons per two hours. Five, five gallons, three pieces of information that is given to us. We are going one mile per minute, which is same as saying we are going 60 miles per hour. We are, bur we are burning, we, we burn the gas at the rate of two, two and a half gallons per hour. And altogether we have burned three and three quarter gallon. This is, they are trying to make it far more complicated than really it is. You can solve it mathematically. You can solve it some, some, some fancy way. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do that. You simply have to understand this part. You see this number three and three quarter is there for a reason. It's there for a reason because we're burning two and a half gallons per hour. Three and three quarter. I hope you're able to see that it is made up of two and a half plus one and a quarter. Why? Because two and a half is same as two and two quarters, obviously. Half is two quarters. So two plus one is three, and two quarters and one quarter is three quarters. Two and two quarters plus one and one quarter is same as three and one quarter. Two and a half, two and a half gallons. How long do we take, how long do we take, how long do we take to burn two and a half gallons? We burn two and a half gallons in one hour. In one hour. In one hour and if you're burning two and a half gallons uh, in an hour how long will it take us to burn one and a quarter hour 30 minutes 30 minutes i'm going to write this one hour which is why i was i was posing i'm going to write this as 60 minutes there we go so we're going to take six it takes 60 minutes to burn two and a half gallons it takes another 30 minutes to burn another one and a quarter hours all together we must have been going for 90 minutes if we're going for 90 minutes at the rate of one mile per minute, we've gone 90 miles. Because we're going mile per minute. That's it. That was the end of the that was the end of the page, page number 66. We're not going to start a new page right now. Tomorrow we'll meet again and we'll do some data sufficiency problems. Alright? And again, as I said before, if you wish to get hold of me, here's my email address, kashwaniprep at iCloud.com. Send me an email and we'll do whatever we whatever we can do together to get you get to get you a better score okay bye now